The Saudis had such an amazing sense of humor. They were laughing and carrying on, and I had no idea they were going to be like that. And then after the show, I got a chance to meet some of the locals. And one guy was almost in tears. He was so emotional. He walks up to me, and he's just like, <laughs> I cannot believe that I am standing here in front of you, Mr. Fluffy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Please. Please, when you return to United States or wherever you travel, let the people know what you saw, okay? Let them know that we are not all bad, that we are not all those bad people from Fox News, okay? <laughs> you let them know, because we see Fox News, and Fox News believes that everybody in Middle East is bad. Everybody's terrorist. Everybody has a bomb. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. Oprah is here giving away bombs to everybody. Everybody has a bomb. Please, you let them know. We are not all bad people, okay? We are not all terrorists. My cousin. Maybe. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look at your face. Look at your face. Oh, I'm going to die. Look at you. A plane. What plane? I got you again. Two for two. I got you. He is raising my blood pressure every seven seconds. And then he starts breaking it down for me how stand-up comedy is starting to bring people together in the Middle East. And how he's starting to, do, you know, he's doing comedy. It's, it was crazy, the conversation. You know, in, here in, the, in Saudi Arabia, um, uh, people, they, they like uh, watching the, the stand-up comedy because uh, we love to laugh, okay? We love to laugh, it's great to laugh. And uh, people don't think that uh, people in Middle East have sense of humor. They, they see videos, they see TV, they think we are the same. They say, oh, in Middle Eastern people are all angry. Look at their face, they're angry. Everybody angry, everybody mad, everybody angry. My friend, we're not angry, it's hot. <laughs> okay, it's 117 degrees. Everybody is not mad, they're hot. Look at everybody has a hot face, hot face. Everybody hot face. I promise you give me air conditioning. I am so happy. <laughs> We are okay. We love to laugh. I've been doing the stand-up comedy for uh, about uh, six months now, and um, I have jokes. Good for you. May I try? Oh, great. <laughs> All right, man, go ahead. Okay, very nervous, very nervous. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay here we go. <sighs> Two Jews <laughs> walk into a bar. Not in my country. <laughs> Man, you're gonna get my ass arrested, bro. <laughs> Martin and I just got back from India. Yeah. So let me tell you, I started posting on Facebook and Twitter that we were gonna go out there to do these shows. And then people started sending me messages questioning what I was gonna do. First of all, are they gonna understand you in India? Will they understand English okay? Will they be able to follow along with your stories? Once we got there, I come to find out that more people speak English in India than in all of the U.S. and Canada put together. <laughs> Might as well throw Mexico in there for extra credit. <laughs> because there's that many people, and yes, they have the internet. They got the internet, they got Bollywood, they got Hollywood. They understand American culture so much more than we understand theirs. Second thing, people tried to warn me about going over there. Gabriel, be careful. India is a third world country. Don't drink the water in India. It contains parasites that'll make you really sick. Don't eat the food from the street people, especially the street meat. It contains a parasite that'll make you really sick. And most importantly, there's a lot of crime over there. Don't stay out late. When the sun goes down, you go down. <laughs> I'm like, is it that bad? So I'm like, let me get this straight. There's a lot of crime, don't stay out late, don't eat any of the food from the street vendors, and don't drink the water. Why does that sound familiar? <laughs> That's Mexico!
When Martin and I got over there, we found out that Indian people and Mexican people have so much in common, you guys. I'm telling you, it's insane how similar we are, especially the food. The food is so similar. For example, Mexicans love tortillas. Indian people love naan bread, which is a fluffier form of a tortilla. Mexicans love chicken. Indians love chicken. Mexicans love hot and spicy. Indians invented hot and spicy. Most popular drink in Mexico is Fanta. Most popular drink in India is Fanta. Indian people worship cows. Mexicans love barbecues. A <laughs> Lot of similarities. Most of the people that I met over there were very hardworking and humble. And I gotta tell you, every time I talked to someone, I was always greeted the same way. They'd look at me, they'd put their hands together, they'd do a little bow, and they say, Namaste, which is an endearing hello. It's really nice and sweet. And then I noticed that Indian people, when you're talking to them, do this thing with their head, where it will begin to move side to side as they're speaking. Now, at first, when you notice it, you think, oh, he slept wrong. He just got a kink in his neck. Get a temper pedic. Now, when they, they start speaking, their head starts moving. And I noticed this. The guy is checking us into the hotel, and he's really cool. He's like, listen, if you have any problems at all, okay, you call the front desk, you press zero, we will send somebody to your room to help you. Whatever you need, we got it for you right here, okay? It's very good. <laughs> now, one thing I notice is the more they talk and the more excited Indian people get, the more the head starts to move around. <laughs> somebody at the hotel yelled out to the clerk, that's fluffy. And the guy was like, oh my God, I don't believe it. I can do it. I thought it was you. I thought it was you. Oh my God, I can't believe it. This is so crazy. Oh my God, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. <laughs> Even crazier than that is that the mouth is actually connected to the neck. When the mouth stops moving, the head stops wherever the mouth left off. And when you see Indian people talking to each other, you can see it. Okay, let me tell you something. Okay, for it. Oh, okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, okay. Like, if you're Indian and you stutter, you are so screwed. Somebody stop him! I'm not gonna lie, you guys. When I first saw this happen, I thought it was hysterical. I thought it was funny. But then I started thinking about it. Head movement is just a form of expression. No matter where you live in this world, people express themselves in their own unique way, whether through facial expressions, hand gestures, body movement, extra words. Everywhere you go, things are different, and that's just how they express themselves in India. Now back to the whole Indians-Mexican thing. That is something else that we share in common with Indian people, head movement. Now, some of you in the building tonight are like, stupid, we don't have head movement. <laughs> yes, we do. It's a little different. See, with Indian people, the head movement is side to side. Mexicans, our head movement is front to back. <laughs> the difference between that is that with Mexicans, we have to be very, very upset in order for you to see the head movement. Otherwise, you can't tell. With Indians, it's all the time. Oh, today is such a nice day. It is such a beautiful day today. I'm so happy. It's very nice, very good. Oh my God, I can't believe it's so nice. It's such a pretty. <laughs> Mexicans, when we're mad, that's when it comes out. For non-Latinos, hey, trust me, you cut off a Mexican in traffic, see what happens. Sácate, pendejo! Lárgate, cabrón! Quítate, desgraciado! That's funny. I don't know why the black people are laughing. You guys take it all. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, hell no. I know he ain't talking about me. Uh-uh. I hit a bell. I hit a bell. I made myself dizzy doing it. <laughs> so let me tell you guys, if you ever get the opportunity to travel to India, I encourage you to check it out. You are gonna see some beautiful things. You are gonna see some amazing things. You are gonna see some sad, depressing things and some real horrible things. Overall, it's a well-balanced trip. <laughs> but when you get back home here to the United States, 
you will have a whole different appreciation for your life. <laughs> Believe that. I guarantee this, you guys. There's a lot of people in India, and with a lot of people comes a lot of traffic. First things first, American traffic and Indian traffic, very different. Here, whatever happens on the freeway will stop the whole freeway. In India, there's 10 times the traffic, but it moves. <laughs> See, the problem is Americans, we're fascinated by accidents. We're fascinated by the idea of seeing potential death. That's why we slow down on the freeways. We say we don't want to see it, but what happens in traffic? You know, ah, what's going on over there? <laughs> there doesn't even have to be a collision. You could be on the 101 freeway and a car has a, a tire blowout and it spins. <laughs> doesn't hit anything. It's now facing oncoming traffic. You know what happens to the rest of the freeway? <laughs> Even on the other freeway, where there's no accident. <laughs> and again, what, what's going on? What's, what's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry, hey, somebody might be dead. Sorry. <laughs> in India, if there's an accident in the middle of the street, you know what they do? They drive right around it. They don't stop. And it's not that they're not sensitive to the situation. They are. It's just that there's so much chaos that happens on a regular basis. They just need to get to work. They do see what's happening. And believe me, they're heartfelt. You know, they'll drive around. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> Nothing stops the flow of traffic in India. They need to get from point A to point B. And so they go, they go. If there's an accident, they drive around. If there's something blocking the street, they get on the sidewalk to go around. It's amazing the way they drive. And here's something else. No one uses turn signals over there. No one uses turn signals. They use a horn. Now, if you go to India tomorrow, from the time you get there to the time you leave, you're constantly going to hear a horn. It's an actual language when people are driving. I'll show you. You're driving? <laughs> Car on your right. <laughs> Car on your left, light up ahead. They talk to each other while they're driving and they barely miss each other every single time. Also, you'll be on the 101 freeway here and there'll be six lanes. In India, you'll see six lanes, but guess what? You'll see 12 cars across. <laughs> yes, they have lines, but they're basically there to let you know more or less the direction you might want to go in. <laughs> they're this close to each other. And even at the light, they communicate. They <laughs> you see everything. Cars, trucks, vans, motorcycles, pedestrians, cows, children, all waiting for the light. <laughs> and they talk at the light with the horn. <laughs> Very good, you can go, you can go. <laughs> welcome, you're welcome, go, go. <laughs> Nothing stops the flow of traffic over there. Indian people drive, think of ants. You know how ants travel in a straight line? And if there's something in their way like a rock, ants will split up go around the rock and reunite, or climb over the rock. Worst case scenario, they dig a hole and go under the rock. That's the mentality of driving in India. A man can get shot in the middle of the street. People just look at each other. Somebody pick him up. <laughs> and they'll drag his ass onto the sidewalk. And if there's an accident and they need to get around, guess what's gonna happen to that guy on the sidewalk? <laughs> Nothing stops the flow of traffic in India, except a cow. <laughs> now, I know we've always heard the stories and the jokes about, oh, Indian people don't eat hamburgers. I asked the question, and I found out. It's believed that cows are people who have died, and they've been reincarnated, and their new life is now the cow, which is why they don't eat them, and why they give them all the love and respect in the world over there. I saw this firsthand. There's a cow crossing the street while we're driving. And the cows know. They're cocky. They know that they can cross. <laughs> all the cows. <laughs> and the cows out there all cocky. <laughs> <laughs> no one honks at the cows. No one yells at the cows. No one touches the cows. They wait for the cows to finish crossing. The cow that we had laid down. The driver just shut off the car, started tweeting. There is a cow in the middle of the street. 
Hashtag Momo. <laughs> I asked the driver, what's going on? Uh, sir, there, there is a cow. I see that there's a cow. Are you going to honk at it, go around? What, what's what's going to happen? Uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, honk at a cow. We must wait for the cow to move. You're kidding. I am not kidding. We must wait for the cow. We drove past a dead body 15 minutes ago. <laughs> that is probably him. <laughs> like seriously, the driving situation over there is so intense, you guys. One morning, one morning while we're there, I needed to get to the airport fast because I overslept. And so I get in the cab and I hand the driver a $50 bill. And I go, sir, I am running very late. I need to get to the airport as soon as possible. Whatever side street you have to take or back road, I'm all for it. Whatever you have to do, let's do it. And I hand him the money and he goes, very good, let's go. And we take off. The guy is hitting anywhere from 50 to 70 miles an hour on the street. We are making incredible time. I notice that we're heading in the direction of a red light. Have you ever been in a car with someone? And you're paying attention to what's going on? And you notice that you're about to hit a red light? And you, you know how you start to mentally and physically prepare yourself for the deceleration of the car? And you start anticipating the pressure from the brake. And if you don't get the sensation of slowing down by a certain point, all alarms go off in your head and you sock the driver in the chest. Hey! Not only did I not get the sensation of slowing down, I got the opposite. He gunned it towards the light. And it caught me off guard. I couldn't even scream. I was like, Argh! and then, Argh! and then I got air. Hey, pull over, pull over. He didn't even know what he did. He looks at me, he goes, what is wrong? <laughs> what do you mean, what is wrong? Dude, didn't you see the red light? As calm as can be. Didn't you see there was no one there? <laughs> you told me, whatever you have to do, okay? Whatever you have to do, you do. Out of all the countries I performed in, my favorite country outside of home is Australia. And I'll tell you why. Australia, much like us in America, has its list of priorities. You know what's not on their list? <laughs> Political correctness. They do not care about your feelings. It's like a country full of Daves. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's very refreshing to be around such a large group of people who speak their minds so freely. And if you know that before you go there, you're gonna have an amazing time. But if you don't know that and you show up, it is a culture shock and a half because I showed up and I didn't know. Everybody says, you gotta see the beaches. And I went to, to the beach. I had people coming up to me. Hey, somebody help me get them back in the water. <laughs> yeah, look at right there, big fella. Look at you right there. You get Oh, look, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. Oh, he's crying, he's crying. I bet it tastes like gravy. <laughs> it's not bullying if everyone does it. Yeah, that being said, I'm in Australia. Sydney, Australia at the Opera House. For me, it was one of the most iconic places I've ever got to perform in. It was bucket list, definitely. After the show, I wanted to go hang out with some Aussies and see what that was like. I'm hanging out at a pub. First things first, Australian people do not drink Foster's beer. That's an American thing. They don't drink that over there. I tried ordering one to fit in, didn't go over well. <laughs> Bartender looked at me. Hey, you like the taste of piss, do ya? <laughs> okay, don't order that again. So I'm hanging out with these two Aussies and we're drinking a rum called Bundyberg. At first glance, it looks like a Coca-Cola bottle because there's a polar bear on the front. And then you drink it and you're like, that's not Coke. 
as we're talking, a third Australian joined the conversation. And he sounded a little bit different from the other two. He had more of a raspy voice. More like, all right, yeah, mate. He did all right. He sounded like a drunk pirate underwater. <laughs> These two guys didn't like him, so they called him a name and they left. And now it's just me and drunk pirate. <laughs> We're talking about life. Life in America. Life in Australia. Talking about our differences. He tells me that he's a professional knife maker. He's showing me how it's done. He's showing me pictures. We wind up polishing off three bottles of this rum. And drunk wasn't even the right word to describe <laughs> our level. My tour manager, Ryan, he comes up to me and he says, Gabe, time to go. And I look at Ryan and I'm like, but Ryan, I just made a friend and he makes knives. <laughs> And they're pretty. <laughs> My tour manager always knows how to talk to me no matter what condition I'm in. If I'm drunk, he knows better than to talk to me like I'm an adult. He talks to me like I'm two. <laughs> he looks at me and he says, hey, buddy. <laughs> you hungry? Well, listen, if we don't leave right now, they're going to close McDonald's and you're going to have to eat at the airport. I got to go. I'm on, you got to go. You got to go. No worries. And he goes to shake my hand. And when he shook my hand, he put his personal pocket knife that he made in my hand as a gift. That's for you, Mike. Thanks for being nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to cut cheeseburgers with this. 